Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel for our Saturday craft day with Craft Galley. Today I'm playing with this adorable Sunny Studio set, Coastal Cuties. This little girl is too much and she's having so much fun. And I am going to be making a card that has a little bit of interest on the front, kind of you know, piques your curiosity, but then when you open it up, bam in your face <laughs> you get lots of fun on the inside of the card which is polar opposite to what I normally do I normally do not do anything with the insides of my cards so we are flipping it 180 and we're gonna have some fun first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to die cut a circle in the front panel of my card base that is the entire base this is the ultimate one layer card because um, there is nothing on the front except stamping and I'm going to use just a circle die cut I have in my stash I put the um, tape on the inside of the circle because I won't be using that and if my machine presses it too hard I don't want it to rip my paper so that is why I chose to do that okay so I get my card panel my card base ready to go I'm gonna place some post-it labeling tape off the top here because I don't want any of my ink to go on to the other side. I just want to keep it a clean look. My Lawn Fawn Wave Die and Cloudy Die, I have taken one of those and cut out into a card piece of cardstock, one on each side. This way I have one little stencil or masking um, piece that I can use and I can just flip it around when I'm ready. I'm going to take some Stormy Sky, that's going to be for my clouds. So on the top here with my makeup brush, you can see I'm just kind of blending it at the very top. Now clouds are white, so this works out perfectly because the background of the cloud is going to be this stormy sky color. So the stark contrast between the white and the ink is okay. It looks good. I'm going to show you a little bit something different when we get down to the bottom of what I do with the waves. But this is such a fun and easy way to make a wow background and it's just so simple um, but you're creating your own background out of just st some stenciling and I don't know if this is stenciling or masking it really doesn't matter you see the technique but I'm taking the wave die now and I am going to use some mermaid lagoon for the wave I thought that was a really good color for the water and I'm doing the exact same thing except now I'm taking some tumble glass and I'm just gonna cover that because I don't want the stark contrast of the white in the waves it doesn't quite make sense to me um, to keep it that way so I just covered it a little bit now we're gonna get on to the stamp set here which is Sunny Studios Coastal Cuties both of these little kids are adorable I'm gonna choose the one in the floaty because she's gonna be in the waves Stamping this out with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink using my Mini Misty. And I am just going to get this ready to be colored with alcohol markers. So the alcohol markers that I'm choosing today are the Ohuhu markers. I'll show you those in a bit. Right here, what I'm doing is writing on the back side of this cardstock what kind of cardstock it is so that when I put it in my um, scraps, I know. Here are my new 120 set of the Ohuhu markers. These are probably my favorite alcohol markers. I'm just so used to coloring with a brush nib or with a bullet nib. Uh, the brush nibs still I need a little bit of practice on, but they're just so easy, especially with little images like this. I find that to be really helpful. If I'm coloring a large chunky image with a lot of space, I like my master markers for that reason because they're very juicy. I can get, cover a lot of area with no problems. Uh, but these little tiny areas with the hair, and I think the bullet nib is really good. Now, if you own Copics or a brush nib marker, you probably have a chisel side on the other end of that marker. And you can get into some of these tight places with a chisel nib, um, just the using the very corner of it. So that that's helpful as well. So you can see um, my color choices. Hopefully you can see them on the screen there, which ones I'm using. But I'm just doing very simple coloring. I... I'm not I'm just putting a little bit of shading where I think it might be um, but I'm not overthinking it you've heard me say this multiple times when you are coloring you're starting out with a medium you have to start somewhere so don't overthink it just have a good time have fun uh, I am so pleased that coloring is back in full effect I think it is such a therapeutic thing to do if you don't allow yourself to get upset with what you're making 
you know, you just, there's been plenty of times when I have made something and it just does not look good. And that's okay. There's no issues with that because more than likely, I learned something from that process. And I'm pretty sure we can equate coloring with life. <laughs> you make a mistake in life, learn from it, move on. Okay, so I'm going to take my coordinating die here and I'm going to cut this little girl out and using my uh, Gemini Junior here. And then um, we're going to get to just putting this card together. There's a couple elements that I'm going to add to it. Um, so we'll get into that in just a second. Okay, on the inside of my card, I wanted to do this sun. I wanted to put a sun in there, so I masked it off. But I, as I'm play, looking at this sun, this is from a um, jelly bean set, I believe. Um, side note, whiteout covers smudges. Good old fashioned Dollar Tree, 99 cent or, or cheap whiteout. <laughs> Just a little tip. Okay, so I colored in this sun and I did not like it. It just, it did not do it for me. I tried, I used some um, some gel pens to color it up. I think it was the black lines of the sun. So I am going to take this memory box sun that I've had in my stash forever, and I'm gonna cut it with the same alignment of that cloud die that was where I wanted to place it. And this way, it's almost like inlay die cutting, only it's not laying inside. It's just laying on top of it. But you can see when I place it down, now it lines up perfectly. It covers that other sun, and I am super happy with that. That is what I was looking for. I think just the black lines of the sun was throwing me off a little bit. So I take my partial sun here, and I am going to just cover that in some distress oxides. Um, this is very simple to do. I used fossilized amber and squeezed lemonade. This way I got a little bit of a darker yellow on the bottom of it, just for a tiny bit of contrast. I'm gonna use some art glitter glue. I'm gonna place that right down onto my panel. And I love the way that it just is aligned perfectly as if it was behind the clouds. So it's just an optical illusion, but it actually is on top of the paper. <laughs> so that was much, much happier with that sun. Okay, so I get that good to go. And then I'm gonna stamp out the sentiment on the inside. Um, this is um, a, a really positive, encouraging sentiment here. But I also just, when you're doing this, make sure that if you don't want it to show through the circle that you bring it up high enough because that was something I almost did wrong. So you wanna bring that sentiment up a little bit higher. I'm using a Nouveau Sparkle Pen for the sun. And then on the front, I just could not get past how plain it was. I tried, I know white space is our friend but I just, I, I needed something. And now this is a stamp set, sentiment set I picked up from Michaels a very long time ago, and it's supposed to help you practice your brush lettering. So I pulled it out because it has some of the most amazing words on there. I just love it. Um, so if you didn't catch that, go back and pause it and you can kind of see what some of those sentiments were. But they're not photopolymer. I believe they're silicone. So because of that, they were not stamping with distress oxides very well. However, pigment inks, true pigment inks, like this VersaFine Claire, will get it to stamp like a dream. So if you have cheaper um, stamps, consider pigment inks. Here's how I store my Twee markers from Arteza. And I'm just gonna pull out one to use for a dot, dot, dot. Now I had a matching color because the Twee markers are 100 to the set and you can pretty much find any color you want. So I picked out that matching color. Um, the sentiment on the front says let go and on the inside it's a reminder that there's always sunshine after the rain. So I thought that was a very good encouraging card for someone who might need it. Plus that little girl's cute. She'll make you smile regardless. <laughs> hopefully. So that's it for the card. Thank you so much for stopping by uh, for crafting with us for this Saturday craft day with Craft Galley. Don't forget to head over to the shop and pick up your goodies. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at all. And if you do the inside of your cards, I'd love to hear about that because I really want to start doing that more often. I'll list everything I used below in the description box and hit subscribe if you don't want to miss anything from us. Until next time, we hope you have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.